people deluded. Now, Amici, I know um, Emil Smith Rowe gets spoken about a lot. Reese Nelson as well. Saka's finally starting to get his praise, and there's a, a couple other players here and there that get praised. But um, so does Amici, Xavier Amici, Xavier Amici for short. Um, he was one of the standout candidates at youth level, and you know, you look at Emil Rowe, Smith, Emil Smith Rowe, sorry, you look at Nelson, you look at probably Saka within the next eighteen months or so. He's still sixteen years of age, so we need to be careful. They're all progressing into the first team and kicking on the doors. Sadly, Amici was doing that. I say sadly, not because he was doing that. I want him to do that. It's because it ended in injury in the sense that he's... Um, it's good news because he's returning from injury now. He's, he, he will return in 2019. But I've seen on his Instagram, he started... He started. I don't I don't know the stage of his rehabilitation, but at least he's, he's running on some sort of treadmill. I think it's a zero-gravity treadmill. But the very fact that he can put... Um, he can. He, he's making some sort of progress in rela in relation to getting that bit that bit closer to first team level or not first team level. Returning to action um, on a football pitch, I can't. I can't be. I can't be more happy for him. Firstly, it's a it's a job, it's, and he's a young player. I mean, he's gonna. It's sad to say, but he's had. It's, it's, he's got a lengthy injury. He's had a lengthy injury. We know he's missed a couple of months now. Two, three, maybe even four now um, because of injury. Um, something to do with his ligaments, I believe. I could be wrong on that. Um, I can't remember the exact injury. Um, but it's sad to say, but it's going to happen again and again. It's not just him, for a lot of footballers, injuries happen. And it's the, the statement you're riding high in April, shot down in May, can be applied because, like I said, under 16 level, one of the standouts, under 18s getting to the FA Youth Cup final, one of the standouts, had a good under 17s um, European Championships. Um, for for England, along with Saka and and all the others that were there from Arsenal, um, and he and this season you thought he signed a pro deal in January last year. He settled himself in the first year scholar. You thought this year we go again. We try and knock on the door of Uno Emery. It's early, but we try and knock on the door. Um, I think he turns eighteen in January, so he's still young. So, yeah, and it's sad because he might have been getting. I don't want to say he'll be in the first team, but he'd be. In the, at least in the force, if he never got injured, and it, it's sad, but it's nice to see that he's returning to he's returning to fitness now. Because, like I said at the beginning, there's a lot of players that get ratings, but this guy has the talent. For me, the only imp obviously you can improve defensively, and you can always your your touch could be sharper, your technique could be refined. You can always add consistency. The only thing I see that's lacking from his game to to reach first team level is at times his decision making in the final third the hardest thing to do is do the right thing on a football pitch what i mean by that is football is simple but again the hardest thing to do is play simple football if you're in the final third you beat two men someone's in a better goal scoring position with me saying this people you should square the ball to that man and put them in we all know in reality that doesn't always happen at times of course he, he does make the right decision a lot of times i'd say eight out of ten times to just the two occasional times he might overrun it or not get his head up. In fact, that's probably the main thing, not getting his head up enough. Um, that's the only thing. He could probably get a bit stronger, but that's overplayed. But other than that, I mean, yeah, man. He's, I don't want to say his stock's falling because he's still 30 and the real fans know. But it's, it's you, you need to remember, this guy's got serious talent like, and he's a wide man as well. So we, we, look, we could be spoiled in the next couple of years if these homegrown talents progress. I believe in him a lot. I clearly like the lad. I want him to stay fully fit. We're praying and keeping our fingers crossed that his rehabilitation, whatever stage it is at right now, is a smooth transition. Because at the end of the day, this is a young man's health at the end of the day. And he's wanted to be, again, I don't know him, but he, I assume he's wanted to be a footballer since God knows how long since he could comprehend in his brain what he wanted to do. And he's he's, he's a full-time footballer. He's, he's had a good season, like I said, and he's not been able to play. And he's seeing, obviously, you're seeing... Mixed success for our under twenty ones and under twenty threes and under eighteen side since the season started, but you're seeing them play in the checker trade. I'm sure he would want to have wanted to have been a part of that. Um, you seeing you obviously you obviously seeing Emil involved at first team level for every young player that's got to be a gas is really you just look at that and you think okay if he can do it I can with a bit of hard work luck and dedication and and things like that. So yeah. Hopefully he's back for the FA Youth Cup. I can't remember when it starts, but I know we play Northampton or when the under-23s begin to take on Pompey, Portsmouth in the next round of the Checker Trade Trophy. Well, under-21s. I know a lot of Neeks get upset when I mix up under-23s and under-21s. But, yeah. Also, shout-out to our England's under-18 side as well. They won the Pin... I can't remember the name. Pinata Cup or something like that. I can't remember it. Either way, it's a little... 
youth international tournament and they won it in it. And I think Amici, ironically, would have been there, but he can't play at the moment. I think Coyle would um Coyle would would have been there as well, but he seems England don't seem to be rated him for a minute right now. But um, John Jules was there, Okonkwo was there, Avante Daly Campbell was there. Um, and I think Balogun was there as well, so shout out to them. Saka probably would have been there, but like Emil, he's in the under-19s now, and that's considering he was under-17s in the summer, and he's now playing for the under-19s despite being 16 years of age, shows how much he's rated and how good he is. I mean, this is a man who was playing, made his, day, made his debut for under England's under, Arsenal's under-23, sorry, while still a schoolboy, and was playing on a regular basis for the under-18 side and still a school lad as well. So, yeah, potential is just potential, but Saka... I rate him a lot, man. I mean, he's got fantastical technical qualities. He sh when you look at his frame, you'd think you could brush him off. You can't do that. Very strong, good technical qualities, like I said. Whether he makes it as a wide man or as a fullback is another story, but the potential is there. And England and Nigeria are going to have a international tussle of war for his future in the next couple of years. So we'll see how it goes, man. But for now... People deluded, get in the comments, subscribe and do the rest if you wish. Oh yeah, and another on another point of John Jules, I think John Jules has four goals in three games for England. He bagged two off the bench against, I cannot remember, I think it was Belgium as well. I could I could be wrong, but nice to see he's in goal, good goal scoring form. But that was completely unrelated, I should have said that earlier. But people, oh yeah, and I saw Joel Willett got a brace for England and Eddie got an assist. So yeah, um, people... DG, I'm out, man. Thank you very much for watching and tuning in and all of these things. People deluded, I'm back again. Now, I like Mkhitaryan. I think he's a wonderfully gifted technical footballer. I do believe um, at the age he's in, he's of the right age where he could be someone of experience, someone that could inspire the other players and someone that can... Take a, someone that would be inspired to, 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 to play and perform every week of sorts to a degree purely because he's, what, 29 turning 30 in January... Not got much long left in the in the in the game. I know you got a good contract at Arsenal, but not got much long left in terms of winning trophies and things. You've won your old league at Man United. I'm sure you want to win something again in your career. So I would have thought he'd someone that would be dying to win of sorts. Um, admittedly, I've not always been a Mkhitaryan fan. You know, I actually used to think it Dortmund for initially, and I think he was. I used to think he was bog standard and was quite rubbish. In fact, he had a, he had a, I'd say eighty months, two years, maybe more. Where he really, I really thought, alright, cool. I was getting at this guy for no reason. He's he's thirty. Obviously, he then got his move to United, and whatever happened happened. So I had a degree. When we got him, I was I was hit there like, all right, cool. Um, life's given us lemons, and we've made some sort of lemonade in the sense that we were we should have we should have sold Alexis for sixty million in the summer. But at that period, he could have walked away to an abroad club or technically unofficially agreed a contract, dirty little hand tactics at Man United to join them last summer for free. So we should have lost the player and not got anyone. So we made lemonade with some limes and on the face of it, you would think Mkhitaryan is more of an Arsenal player than United, more of a technically gifted footballer and all of these things, it would bang for him. And I don't feel he's been terrible but I do think he's been underwhelming I don't think he's I'm not I didn't think I was going to see a world-class talent and Eden Hazard but I thought he's going to be someone that could chip in and, and do certain things and to be fair he did that against Wolves um he had a good game last season against Everton I think he played in our defeat to his former club at Old Trafford I felt he was good probably his best game for me is probably in the AC Milan what was it San Siro him and Ramsey were quite good so was Xhaka I'll give him that. The problem is, for his 30, 31 appearances he's made, there's not too many of them. He scored He scored against Chelsea at the start of the season, but in the game, we all know he underwhelmed. We don't know what we're getting from him. In the same way the questions are asked of Ozil, they're not asked of Mkhitaryan to a degree. I know I'm saying, I'm not speaking for everyone because they clearly are, but yeah, like, clearly he's better in the 10 row and he's being harmed out wide of sorts. I say that because he's made a career of playing on either position, so it don't really hold weight. Um... But I don't really know what's wrong. There's two. He's one of them players. When they play poorly, they play extremely poorly. Like I remember the Spurs game. Spurs away at Wembley. I was there. Um, appalling. Everyone was appalling. But he, just everything was going wrong from start to finish for him. Like I just I not seeing anything from him. There's there's talent within the player. Like there is talent. Like he's already probably he's got better stats in his in his games and minutes and and appearances at Arsenal than he does at Manchester United. I mean what in his 31 appearances at Arsenal he's got five goals and nine assists. The sad thing is the bulk of them nine assists probably come within the Europa League. I've not seen enough in the Premier League. Like you should be a player that we're actually if you're not if we're not 
saying you're one of the first names on the team sheet, you're one of the you're the twelfth man, or you're someone that's rotated in and out. And while you are, I'm pretty sure most Arsenal fans, if you was to leave or um, you was unavailable for selection for the last couple of next couple of weeks or so. We would bemoan it because we're losing a body and you can come off the bench like you did against Wolves to good effect. But it won't be the end of the world of sorts. And yeah, man, I think at this moment in time, that Alexis and Mkhitaryan deal for both clubs looks to be one of the most terriblest deals, if that's even a word, in either club's history and probably even Premier League history of sorts, man. I mean, Mkhitaryan's always saying that Arsenal's his style and he's always sneaked this in United and stuff like that. But I just need to see more, man. I'm not here to blast the man. I'm not here to say this and that. But I think he's a good player. I just, I'm not seeing enough. Like I said, of several players. But, yeah, just I'm not seeing enough. Whether he starts or if he's on, off, excluding this game when he comes off the bench. I'm just not, not seeing enough. And what annoys me as well is he switches off defensively a lot. Every, uh, quite a few of them do it. But he seems to walk at times and it is annoying. And, yeah, what, what game was it? Um, the Liverpool game. He was quite atrocious, to be fair with you. And... Super, he's a hero this week, but yeah, he was terrible against Liverpool. So, yeah, I don't think I've got much to say, man. I don't think I've got much more to say on that front. So, people, deluded, comment, subscribe, and the rest if you wish. I'm out.